Hello, Channel Automation Podcast listeners. Welcome back to another deep dive into the techniques that convert leads. I'm your host, Casey Arise, and today I'm joined by Vic Sun from Channel Automation. You may know this guy. Uh, this podcast is a special edition for the new year, since I know that those listening have your ears perked up and ready to intake new marketing ideas. How you doing, Vic? Are you ready to roll into 2024? <laughs> Do I have a choice? Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> don't uh, you're ready for it. It's either you're ready or you're not, and I am. Yeah. How, how about you? Yeah, I think so. I have a good feeling about this year, um, and I think that we're in a really awesome place right now in channel automation where we're continuously growing and improving, and it's super exciting, but it also is a little bit overwhelming. Uh, so as long as we keep on top of everything, we should be pretty solid. That's right. <laughs> All right. So today we're going to be discussing marketing effectiveness and marketing strategies uh, starting in 2024 and going into the future. And is there a right or a wrong way to message to clients? And so this is something that we've been asked a lot. So I figure that we would just go ahead and hash it out right now. So Vic, do you think that there is a right way and a wrong way to message clients? And do you think that everyone needs to kind of do it in the same way? Or do they have to follow a certain formula? What is your thoughts on that? Right. So, yeah. I mean, when it comes to wrong or right way, I think providing context is important, you know, where where we might say that the right way to do it is really the way in which it produces the most enjoyable experiences for the end consumer, for the person who's receiving them. I think this is a key factor in how you solve for these issues or you articulate them because most of the time businesses and you, and you watch all these other podcasts from other um, platforms, for example, where they talk about what's the right messaging in 2024, what's the right messaging for our clients for text or email or whatever. And what they really have in mind is how do I sell my platform to this business? Um, and so we're going to talk about what the business wants. When I think the right way to to think about this is to look at it from the perspective of the person receiving them. Okay. Um, and I think that's the right way of thinking about this, solving it upstream, as well as creating those experiences. Because when you do that, you'll end up with the right things, which is the right results, right? Getting better conversion, getting people to like your brand, people actually wanting the information or the messaging that you, um, you're doing. And then with regards to what's the wrong way of doing it, Again, same thing, providing context to that. The wrong way might be the th mindset that you take as a company and saying, well, I want to be able to just convert more. I just want to be able to get my messages out there, regardless of whether or not the customer wants that or not. Um, so yeah, there is, I, I would say, a right way and a wrong way. And it starts with how you um, contextually put that, those, those two terms. Um, you know, and, and, and again, going back to you, what do you, what do you think, you know, people, cause that's a, that's a big problem, isn't it? Like, you know, I, I, when, when trying to solve for that uh, challenge or trying to create improvement is first you start off with what's the right way, what's the wrong way. And if you're already not contextualizing it, I think you're, you end up with, with, with the wrong uh, messaging or the wrong strategy. What do you think? That's exactly what I was going to say. Um, and it is very common and unfortunate that a lot of these questions that people are asking themselves, um, it is very broad. Like if you were listening to a new platform that's pitching you, it's like, listen, everything that you're doing is currently wrong. Let me show you the right way to do it. Right. It's not necessarily like this is wrong all the way around. This is right all the way around. It's specifics. It's like you aren't sending out your messages right because you're not following compliance and this is how you get it done. You're not sending messages wrong because you're putting in like paragraphs and paragraphs of things um, and sending stuff out that people just aren't interested in hearing. You just need to calibrate in a way that your audience wants to hear the information. So being able to assess and making that individual um, pivot to a, uh, to a strategy that works best for your location, for your audience, I think that's the most important thing to consider. Yeah, uh, and, and, and it's interesting how you say compliance and, and those those things. Yeah, because of the way that businesses look at this, the right way and wrong way, and, and the way that they see it is, what's good for me? 
enough for the end user. We now have in place things that restrict your business. And now it's become very restrictive and people are complaining about it. Things like the 10 DLC A2P, you know, policies, you know, brought forth by the ISPs like AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile. So it used to be like with text messaging, for example, there wasn't any spam rules, you know, that were so stringent. Now there are, right? You have to go through a litany of, 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 of things in order for your messages now to go out, especially if they're marketing messages. And I think that there's also that um, a lot of companies are not aware of the fact that with you know channels like text messaging, for example, it's so easy for people to just not want to communicate with you past your first message. So the stakes are higher, I think, when it comes to these. And so when you look at you know what is the right way to the wrong way, I, I really advise against listening to you know, platforms or, or people that are selling you their service. I mean, even for us, like we, we're, like we always say, like, we're not the right fit for everyone. Don't listen to us, you know, go do what is best for your consumers. Um, and if you don't have, you know, the bandwidth for, you know, solutions like ours, don't use ours, right? Because there's a certain thing that, you know, you must qualify for in order to be that dominant company. So I think that, it, that's a very good thing, you know, to go and, and, and contextualize right from the get go. Was the right way the wrong way? And for at least an hour opinion, you know, the right way is what is the thing that creates the most enjoyable, most memorable, right? Most, uh, most effective, not just efficient, but most effective way for you to communicate with the end users who, who are your customers, your cus- your prospects. Absolutely. And I really liked what you were saying about like people are very likely to go for what is easy for their business or what might make their lives easier in terms of like buying software and piling it together into one thing that is expediting the information out. But that isn't necessarily what your consumer wants. And that's what should be the primary focus because they're the one that's giving you money. <laughs> so um, what I also wanted to uh, kind of ask you about these businesses that are trying to transfer over to more of an omni-channel experience where maybe they're just making phone call, phone call, phone call right now. How how difficult is it to jump into this new swimming pool of all these different options, all these different new rules? Like, what do you have to go through to get there? I think not just having the intention of providing omni-channel communications to your customers, I think it's having the intention of constantly improving that because if you've never done it before, you're going to fail at it. That's something you're just going to expect. And if you if you have that sort of mindset, you're already going to win um, significantly more than if you. And, and it's a good it's a good lift for your for your attitude and your 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 way of assessing, you know how this thing works. Um, how difficult is it? Not 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 at all difficult. I think it's first you've got to have the guts to actually go and confront your issue, which is. I've only been doing phone calls. You know, this is usually the case, or maybe you've been doing some emails, but you weren't really good at that. But let's face it, lots of companies in spaces that we work with, they're very phone centric. They're very voice centric, right? You, you, they, they get leads. They, most of them purchase leads. They're not really producing them uh, organically, you know, through content or through engaging things. So uh, lots of them are purchasing these low intent leads and treating them you really just with one strategy. That one strategy is I want to call them. Now, what's interesting about this is nowadays, let's pretend that nine out of 10 people, even though in some cases, 10 out of 100% of the people that give you their phone numbers are, are giving you their phone numbers if they're real leads or they're real customers or people, it's a cell phone. But let's just say for argument's sake, 90% of them, it's a cell phone that you're contacting. It's interesting that a cell phone can now have, it's a smartphone for the most part, like an iPhone or an Android. It can receive phone calls, voicemails. So that's the voice piece. But it also can receive text messages, emails. And if you're a Facebook or Instagram user, messages from those social platforms. And yet businesses are contacting people only through one form, which is one way, phone calls. 
And, and you could say, well, voicemails are part of that. Um, and it boils down to really some simple math, right? You go and think to yourself, um, if there's at least two types of individuals from every lead source, modernize, Quincy, Home Advisor, ANG, BuyerLink, you know, Leads Connect, whatever it is that you have as a lead source. And you're saying, well, I've got a lead source and they're people, <laughs> normal people who have a cell phone, but my methodology is calling them. Then you could just right off the gate say, well, there's those people, 100% of them can receive text or 90% of them can receive text or emails. But I'm really only taking the strategy of calling them. So there's only, if you're if you're looking at only two channels, let's just keep it that simple as that, 50% of them will want phone calls and the 50% would want text. If you're just doing phone calls, then you know that the 50% of those um, leads are just not going to do business with you. And that's what you're missing. So it, when you when you say, well, yeah, how easy it is, how difficult it is, it's easy if you consider the simple math and you go, well, I should be talking to them through another channel or through another way, right? Um, because mathematically, I would do better. I could I could You're go and start- a bigger net. Yeah, a, a better mousetrap, a, a bigger net. Um, and I just think you're just going to give the consumers what they want, right? And, and there's all kinds of, of, of other things in there where some people, you know, from lead sources are not going to connect with you via phone because they're just not who they are. They're people who want to go and communicate with you via text or email or through chat because they, you know, uh, there's there's this thing where people are busy or they get anxiety talking to people to strangers, right? Or their 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 intent right now is to audit you first or to kind of just shop around, and so they want something that's not as involved as a phone call. Um, and I think it has nothing to do with whether or not you're a successful business uh, or if whatever you're doing has been working for years. This is about you thinking about this as, like we talked about the question, you know, what's right and what's wrong. Well, what's right for your business is to do better for your business. And the way to do that is to give the consumers what you want. So if you're not offering them the text and you already know that 90 to 100% of them has a cell phone, you're really not giving them what they want in its entirety because you're just basically thinking well i'm just going to call you well half of those people if some if sometimes more than half they don't want the phone call yeah and and you're also assuming that all these people don't work during the day when you are calling you know like your shift is probably the same shift as many people that you're trying to get a hold of yeah and and, and i explain this to business owners in these two ways which i i get i i, I almost get crickets or i get a snicker here and there um, I ask one question, I go, you know, um, you know, how, how much do you like your, your phone getting blown up by telemarketers? Like, do you like getting 50 phone calls over the next two weeks from the same company that you've not answered their phone? Um, or would you rather that they send different types of correspondence like text and email so you can at least have a choice to respond? And it's interesting because None of these CEOs will ever, not, not one CEO or VP has ever told me, I prefer getting my phone blown up by people that I've never spoken to or I've not answered the phone. Not one of them do. And then you go, oh, you have a call center. Like, do you take that strategy? If the answer is like, yeah, we do actually do that. I say, well, how come you, you don't like that yourself personally? And, and you're, you're a leader in that company and you have a cell phone, you're a human and, and you're probably a consumer you know, for other businesses. And yet you treat your customers that way. It's probably because they're not thinking about the consumer, right? They're just thinking about their business. And then the other way I, I kind of try to contextualize this without getting them involved fully there um, is simply, you know, trying to get them to to realize the math behind it, the mathematics behind it and, and, and really say, look, if forget about all those people that, you're contacting that want a phone call. By the way, if they wanted to, they wanted to talk to you, they'll just call you. You have your phone number on your website. Great, they're going to call you. We're not going to change their mind just because you're you're starting to think about oh maybe I should text, email, chat with them. It doesn't mean at all that they're going to stop calling you because those people want to speak to you. But all those people that aren't, if you're not creating other strategies right, with other channels to communicate with those people, you're simply not doing 
first of all, you're not doing what you can to provide better service and better better ways of communicating with your company, right? Having the customers reach out to you in other channels. But you're also doing your team a disservice because you're not doing what you can to maximize your the, your, the customer's, the prospect's ability to be able to talk to you. All right. Well, I'm going to business owner at you now. This is my business owner mustache. I just pretend it's a mustache. I don't have a mustache on my desk. So uh, maybe I don't like receiving a thousand phone calls during the day, but how long is this going to like take to put like in a program with text and emails and, and getting everything changed over in the call center and training the team? And it sounds like it's going to be really expensive. How, how, how what am I supposed to go and do all of that in like a two month period? That's when I want to see conversion like two months from now. Okay. Uh, it, and and the, the, the answer to that question is really just asking more questions and things like, well, you've never done this before and you're talking about revolutionizing how you're doing things and you're going to be making millions of dollars you know um to 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 us to many to many companies that we work with it's that level right over time can you go right now like just go to any bank and say well let me go and do this and i want to spend like 5000 per month for the next two months 10000 and i want a million dollars back no one's going to say that. No, like no one's going to give you those terms, right? Do you need to spend a million dollars to make a million dollars? No, but you need to look at this from the mindset of I'm doing this and my timeline is forever, right? My timeline is not forever in that you'll never get your results. It's I'm constantly making my customers experience more enjoyable because I'm going to continue to reap that. And so my 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 point here is that if if a customer thinks it they're going to suddenly get results in two months, yeah, you could, but it's not to the degree of what you're looking at, where you're saying, well, if I get a million dollars out of this and I spend a hundred thousand, you get ten x, right? That's no bank will give you that right now. Just putting your money in the savings account, right? Is it? Do you have a risk in it? I think your risks are very low when you're just trying to provide very good customer experience to customers, right? But it does require that you have a different mindset other than, again, I think this is the reason why a lot of companies will still not do this. They'll just stick it out with phone calls because that fear is not born out of something that's logical. It's emotional, right? Because if every single one of these companies, let's pretend you said, well, you make 10,000, like a $10,000 average ticket and let's say you said, well, you'll get two and a half more sales a week. So that it's $100,000 additional sales a month. Over a period of 10 months, you'll get a million dollars of additional revenue that you would never, never gotten because you have these channels. Okay. And they said, well, I want to get that in two months. I want to be guaranteed in that in two months. I'll tell you right now, this is a company that's not going to do well with this messaging. They'll probably put that together. And then they'll get some lift in the first two months and then everything will set downhill because they're going to do exactly what everybody else is doing. They get text messages set up. They're going to go and bombard that customer just the way they do it on phone calls. So in the beginning, they'll get that. And then people will start re realizing, oh, that's not the business we want. So they'll report that business and then they'll start getting, you know, those issues uh, sprouting up again. So I think that, you know, if, if we just had people, um, businesses look at this from a long-term perspective and say, we're in this for the long haul because we want our customers to be able to communicate with us in multiple channels, you know, looking at that from at least six months to a year where you're going to say, I'm going to focus on giving my best experience for my customers. You'll find that those companies are the ones that are dominating. They're the, they're the ones that are making millions of dollars head, you know, hand over fist because the customers are just going to them. Case in point, Amazon. I mean, just think about how long it took Amazon to perfect their model. But now there's a huge chunk of the market that won't even buy, it won't even go to a store because it's such a hassle. They can get it on Amazon and there's an issue, they can return it without a problem, right? And if they wanted to go and chat with somebody, text somebody, email somebody or call somebody, all of those are available and the experience is great. Yeah, because it's it's on demand, it comes right to you. And that's why people don't have cable TV anymore either because these companies are user focused. They're saying, okay, what's gonna be the best experience for them? Because as long as they are having an easier life working with you, they don't feel like leaving. 
You know, they're like, okay, why would I go work with this other home improvement company where I have to like slot out part of my day to constantly have to get these like check-ins and review the home and do all this paperwork. Like obviously you want them to do a good job and you want to have eyes and ears on the project, but you also don't want to be completely tied down, like dedicating all of your time throughout the week to whatever this person is supposed to be helping you with. You know, you don't want to be a burden to them. Yeah. And, and you know, for the for the listeners or the people who are watching us and it's like, hey, just tell me, you know, what the right or the wrong way of doing this. Well, I think we've kind of capped off like with, with the wrong way. And I'm sure, you know, you'll come up with more things, Case. But it's really very simple, right? It's if you want to dominate, do what other people, do what your competitors are not doing, right? If you provide really good experiences to people and you're, especially with your marketing messages where you don't sound needy and you're not, you don't sound, um, I, I heard this one-on-one -on -one podcast. They said, oh, you have to be persistent, but not pesky. Well, you know, it, it, this is nuts sometimes where, you know, oh, this nice, these nice pneumatics, persistent, but not pesky. When you're persistent and you don't, you know, you're not sending the content that people want, you're automatically being pesky, right? Those two are one and the same. It's just two different words, right? I think it's really important for people to go and look at this from, you know, if don't be like a marketer, right? Do it where you, again, it's so unintuitive to many spaces that the unintuitive is the right thing for people to do. Right, like for example, if 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 a if you have a, a set of customers who will not schedule an appointment with you via voice, and it's so unintuitive for you to provide self scheduling, then freaking work on that. That is what the rest of those people that are not converting. It's as simple as that. It's really that simple. But I, like I said, it's not a logic issue. It is an emotional issue for many of these companies because they already know. They already know this. Right, they go and say, "Well, we've never scheduled an appointment. We can't confirm them without us talking to the person." See, you already know what the issues are. We'll build an experience around that. Work on that. And if you think that you can do it in two months, do it in two months. Prove it. I mean, you don't look at Arnold Schwarzenegger and say, "I'm going to get that body in two months." Like you have to kind of put in some effort in order to get the results. <laughs> people are like that though people we know you like you and i have both worked with over hundreds of accounts the last year and and we only pick and choose to work with now people like that's at a top 20 30 percent because we easily identify the people who want results without effort right like the, the, you start hearing this talk track you know in the beginning of the discovery like okay well we'll pay for you this and so in in 30 days you know we want the results it's like where can you go do, I mean, can you just go to a bank and you go to an organizing organization and say, well, I'll spend, let's say $5,000 this month and I want $500,000. It, it's, it's almost like that, but they just don't hear themselves. You know what I mean? Because they, they just, <laughs> or two months, you know, oh, I'll spend this. Well, you know, I didn't double my business. Wow. I think a lot of this, uh, this change is also put on the shoulders of the call center managers and the people making phone calls that like especially the call center reps like they're probably getting paid minimum wage and then you're just like i want this strategy i want you to talk to them like this i want you to interact with them like this but they're not given specific specific instructions how to and understanding the why behind it as well you're kind of trying to get them to fill in the blanks and they're just like listen just tell me what i'm supposed to be doing and i'll do it and then i'll go home rather than actually getting them interested and getting them tools to be like Look, this is going to get you your bonus. If you work with it like this, you, you, this new software, this is going to help you out. And once you get a certain amount of, um, you know, appointments or whatever you are trying to do, then you're, you're going to be celebrated. You're going to be put on a pedestal. And a lot of um, companies don't consider that. They just kind of throw up all of what they want to happen on top of these, these reps and try to get them to like make up the difference. And I feel like they need more support than that. You make a good point. Like, um, that's why in, in some cases, you know, um, especially for long-term strategy, you want to look at the people that you have as well. Um, just because like we have automation and, and all the speed to contact, you know, things that, but it's really also training your agents 
with the use of like for our example for our system is we're natively connected to chat gpt and so you can calibrate your scripts but it might require an administrator or the manager understanding how that works and so prompting chat gpt we help train them there calibrating the script so you know which which is you know what what type of uh script or what type of templates you need to use first tracking those through our system so that you can a b test these things take time does it take a year no but it does take time. It means that you have to you have to be focused on providing the very best experience, and you need to start training your your um, your machine, your AI, right? Um, the difference is that you with 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 ChatGPT, it it'll never divorce you, right? It'll never leave you. It's like an agent that's constantly going to learn, and it's going to do what you ask it to do, and it's going to be loyal to you. And it's going to provide you with uniform messaging and, and and in many cases, even more professional ways of talking via text, right? Text, email, chat um, that a human may not be able to do because let's face it, different agents are, especially in our in- industries that we work with, many agents are hard for, for being on the phone. Well, p- some call centers don't realize this, but those are agents may not be the best people to 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 send texts or emails or even manage that because that's not what they were hired for okay so we work with with very large companies um where you'll look at their call center and they have a hundred right and 80 percent of them are omni-channel agents they can be on voice but lots of them just do text email social e- uh you know chat and then there's twenty percent of them who have phone calls. You look at those two demographics are completely different, right? The ones who are omni-channel are usually within the millennial, the Gen Z um, range, and then the ones who are um, on the on the voice side, and maybe that's all they do. They have some text capability and email, but that's what their that's what their superpowers are. They're they're not millennials. They're not Gen Z. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? You're 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 utilizing people's skills based on what their preferences are. But I think, you know, coming back to the question you had, like what's what's you know, what's the buy-in on these things? I think it's carefully and strategically saying, well, look, these are this is the now. I have to have the right people using it, um, train the people to do it and not just have one. Most of the time with legacy industries like home services or solar, um, mortgage, you know, insurance, like you see it like they're treating their agents like the way they treat their leads, one strategy, right? That's it. Like, I mean, I for their customers, I, I'm only doing phone calls. For their agents, it's like, you're just making phone calls. And then now when you introduce omni-channel, they, they suddenly surprise like, oh, out of my 10 agents, five of them can't spell or they're not, that's not their thing. Well, that's because you only had that one strategy in the beginning. Are you saying that specific people have specific skills? I'm confused. You're telling me that every single call center representative doesn't have the exact same skill set? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's it, it makes no sense that people are unique. <laughs> <laughs> that they have their own preferences and their own skills and 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 they're not just another number and um, yeah uh so i think One that's the things that's i was going to ask you because you were talking about ai a little bit and i know that there's been we're actually going to be releasing a video on one of these things going into more depth about um what it is for ai versus automation versus live representative but i kind of want to get your thoughts on it as well like can an ai agent close a lead like are they able to make a sale or are they just the front door to like kind of push people to the person who has the talent to convert both i it's 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 the both isms that i i you know i, I talk about I use this term um i don't even know i don't think it's a real word but it could be um it can be both right the again just like a, a particular strategy you might have low intent leads. And the first thing that you want to do there is really just nurture them to get them more comfortable. So you train your, your, your machine, you know, your, your AI to go and, and nurture. And you can do that through systems like ours, right? Where you can go and say, look, I want these leads that, you know, I, I haven't converted on via voice. I want to start nurturing them and start giving them content, asking them questions. Like our system has this very unique feature where we can ask the customer, look, you know, like you entered a sweepstakes and entered to win. 
um, and you wanted to win windows. Well, we've made suggestions to our clients and say, look, why don't you train the system to go and basically say, like, you look, you're one step away from this enter to win. You know, the, ne- the very next step is just providing a little bit of effort. And we know when people put effort, that's a high intent lead now. You go and say, in order for to qualify to formalize your offering, um, sorry, your, 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 your sweepstakes entry or your entry to win, you know, whatever this is, um, take a photo of the windows that you'd like us to go and qualify you for. Now you have the system, you know, analyzing the photos because chat GPT can do this through our system. You can train it to go and say, well, look, it looks like you have wood windows that have some rotting in them or aluminum windows that are not very secure. Again, you can train it to go and do whatever you feel is, is important. And again, your salesperson who's following a talk track and simply feed it with this information um, and it will go and do that. And then at that point, you can train it to go and say, well, would you like to speak to somebody about it? Chat, voice, text, whatever, email us so that you can schedule an appointment because we do have promotions and we, you know, you're qualified for more than just this enter to win. There's other things that we can provide to you. Now that's mystery. So I think that's when you're, you, you seem very helpful to people and not just going and saying, hey, enter to win. And then most people, the reason a lot of these sweepstakes and these things don't work is people are smart nowadays. They know you're not trying to just give them free sh- stuff, right? But if you make them work hard for it, it becomes more believable. It's like, well, you can't just enter this thing and win it. Can you at least show us your windows, your roofing? And then you don't have to trust an agent to be able to do that because chat GPT through our system will actually provide recommendations or say, well, this is the next step to do that. So that enhances your agent and the customer's experience. Okay. And then if you have inside sales programs where you've already given them a price, same thing. If you don't have those people, you know, and you don't have a salesperson to spare on your inside sales, you know, thing, then program it to go and say, once you provide a price, you're going to follow up with the customer and say, Hey, we gave you a price of $10,000. We couldn't really give you the bottom line pricing. Um, you know, would you like to send us the quotes from your competitors? And then from there, train your 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 chat GPT to go and say, hey, based on this pricing, here's a link. Take a look at our offering versus yours. Because our system actually does that. It builds landing pages and it can help compare your input. So if a customer says, well, I got a price for like $8,000 and they were going to give me eight windows. And then we can populate it on a summary page. It says, our price is 10000 and we were giving you 12 windows. This company is going to be 8000 for eight windows. We can match that, but here's the additional benefits, photos, videos. So there's a lot that we can do. And you'd start to think like, man, not a lot of companies are doing that. And you're right. Not a lot of companies are doing that. Here's why. Because to them, it's still better to keep the status quo and find things to blame or find reasons why they can't do this, or it might take a long time because the unknown is not really the unknown. They already know that you can have a better experience. They just don't want to work on it. So that's just, that's not a logical problem. You couldn't call it laziness. You can call it fear. You can call it like uncertainty. You can call it comfort. Like they, they have their comfort strategy and they don't, they don't want to go outside of that. It, the comfort zone is the part of a business owner's like they need to be aware of that and not put that pressure on that person and say, look, what we want is really good experiences. Are you up for that task? Because companies like Channel Automate, our, our team will actually help you. Well, we can't run your business. No platform will do that. And if a platform could do that, they'd, they'd surely be charging more than what they're charging each month on a subscription because then they're saying, well, now we're running your entire business and it's all automatic and we'll help, you know, get you 20, 30%, double, triple your business. Well, they're, they're, they're surely going to go and say, you need to pay more than <laughs> the monthly subscription we're charging, right? Because that's, that, that, that's my point. Um, but many companies obviously have embraced that. And I think it's easier for them because they know the results are there. They've experienced it. They've grown it. They just enjoy providing really good experiences to their call center because now they want their call center to have more um, ways to engage a customer. They want to train those people. They want to grow those people. And then for the end users, they really just care about how the customer, their experience. You know what I mean? Like when you're in that type of mindset and people talk about this all the time, I think 
that's the winning mindset. That's the mindset that gets you to actually convert better. You know, I mean, let's face it, right? Um, companies that know that their product is really good and their service are really good, they don't really have to think about, are people going to buy? Like when was the last time like Louis Vuitton had a sale or, you know, with car companies like, like Tesla, they never have a sale. You know what I mean? You never get discounts from that <laughs> because they change the, the minds their, their mindsets are different. You go into some legacy industries and they say, Oh yeah, we're, we're the best at what we're doing here. But that's not really the question. The question is how come you're not converting? And then you look at the customer experience and they're doing exactly what the chuck with the truck is, or just the small business. They're doing exactly the same when, un, when again, because it's unintuitive to them. So I think it's a, it's a bit of a brave, you know, being brave, having that courage. But sometimes I think it just takes the right type of leader. I mean, we've come across all these people and, and there are certain leaders that will never, ever be our customers. And then you go and speak to some leaders who are very inspirational. And for them, it's like, we're going to make the sales. We just want our customers to be informed every time there's like, we have a customer who started in 2019, started in, in the bath business. And they've essentially gone from zero to like 75 million in like four years, like 25 million. I mean, they're going to be a hundred million to follow year. It's like, they've just grow exponentially. And their thing of engaging us in the beginning was, we just want to make sure that every time we send somebody out, the customer knows about it. And then when we do something, we notify them. They're, they were really geared towards that experience. Like they want to provide the best experience to their customers and and they don't really have to worry about conversion because everybody else in their space is worried about the conversion. They're worried about experience. I know. I, I was trying to figure out your context clues who you were talking about. Now I know who you're talking about. Not that it matters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but, yeah. um, I, I just wanted to say that um, we're going to start wrapping up soon. And obviously there's more to talk about um, when we're talking about this conversation. And I hope you learned essentially that it's not necessarily a matter of a right or wrong answer. It's a matter of getting to know what your business needs. And if your business doesn't need us, then that's okay. You just need to get get an idea of what your voice is and how you want to project it to your audience and understand what your audience wants, which is the most important part. Um, so then, one, uh, I, I do want I do want to add one one very quick thing, and and this is to I was to about leave. to say, do you want to say anything real quick? <laughs> Sorry, I think that the thing that I would give advice to people is to like they're still scratching your heads. Well, what is there, like? There are some people probably still. Well, what is the right way to to market to people? How do I get more appointments, sales, demos, whatever the case may be? I think once you did decided, hey, now I'm going to provide text, email, chat. And you know that's one of the easier things, easier decisions. I'm just going to open up my channels. What is it to send out? What what messages do you need to send? This is the part where it's actually quite easy. And if you take these three pieces of advice, you will improve every single month, every single quarter, every single year. The first is, you know, the speed to lead, you know, situation, right? Again, I, I say this when I'm I'm, I'm talk, talking. It's not mine, you know. I took this from from smarter people. Like crap that arrives at a speed of light is still crap when it gets there. Okay. You don't. You, what you send matters. If you yourself, okay, receive this message and you think, man, this this thing sounds looks the same as my competitors, and it sounds needy, and there's no value to the person who has low intent other than just to to do what I want. Right off the gate, you know you can improve on that message. Okay? So what you send matters. Number two, okay, timing is important. We work with companies like Active Prospect and, and, and other companies like Active Prospect where you can collect the metadata. So messaging people when, you know, it's when they have your attention is actually very important. So think about this. If if you were trying to sell something in your bathroom, right? For a bathroom. And you receive these leads. Yeah, for sure. You want to notify them, hey, I've received the information. But let's say you're sending content for them to consider your product. When are people in the bathroom? Is it like in the middle of the day when they're showering? They're probably at work, right? And if they were in the bathroom, they're not in their bathroom. 
think about that. That's persuasion. You know, Robert Cialdini, if you look him up, he, he talks about that all the time. He's got books on that. People can't have their attention and, and, and have that economic decision with you when they're distracted. So forget about your promos and all this needy stuff where you're trying to send them like a discount or a promo or sending an appointment or address. Because if they're not thinking about that bathroom at that time, they're not there, they're not focused, then you're not top of mind. They're just distracted, right? So they're not even wanting to go convert it. So when is important. There's a really good book by Daniel Pink called When, The Science of Timing. I highly recommend this book. Um, if you reach out to me, I can even give you the audible. Um, you know, if you have a business that meets like, I'll give it to you. Um, and the third piece here is content creation that matters to people. People still, like if you look at their texts and a lot of platforms are automated, right? They just send you a template and they say, oh, that worked. It worked for the first 30, 90 days. And then after it's like, it's all downhill from there because they're selling it to everybody else. Content matters, but content that matters to the person. So our system can go and actually figure out the intent. So we say, hey, this is from this lead source. This is uh, how old this lead is. We've already called them several times. They're only interested in bathrooms and they may be from this demographic. Sending them content that's relevant to those things will be the way to make it effective. So don't send them messages about, here's our best promo of the season and sending it to like 10,000 other people thinking they're the same thing. Why don't you send them video pieces like ours or pictures that say, um, you're in Nevada, you're in Utah, you're in Atlanta, and you're looking for a bathroom, and you're in this neighborhood, and this is the type of person you might work with, with a persona, and here's a video on the differences between a walk-in tub, a walk-in shower, or a casement window, and, and now you're sending them you know, you're watching them, have them watch videos on text, email, you're sending them a landing page, we build, which has the content. So now your SEO is ranking, right? Because people are watching those videos. Oh yeah, they're the only ones that actually explain the difference between the other companies, the prices and the options. Now you think about that. I never once said, oh, that's how you get them to like do this because it's understood you're going to get that. You're going to get those people. They're going to say, nobody else is giving me that information. Everybody else was like needy and whatever, like called me 25 times. No, this is the only company that answered my questions, anticipated what my, my curiosity was going to be. They're the ones that did it through video or pictures and they didn't make me read, right? <laughs> and so naturally you'll get to stand out. You'll be top of mind. And I think with regards to the persuasion bit, people will actually pay attention because they won't ignore, they, like, they won't ignore your messages. They'll be like, Hey, this is actually pretty cool. I've learned something today and you won't sound salesy. You won't sound like you're being needy. And I think if you just focus on those things, not only will we get less of this restrictions, because I really hate the policies that are happening, it's anti-business, but government organizations and ISPs, they're going to continue to make it more and more stringent on businesses to market and do these things as long as we do not solve this issue, which is how do we create better, more enjoyable experiences for other humans. And if you are looking for a little bit more information, um, context on what Vic is saying, um, I definitely recommend uh, taking a listen to our last few podcasts where we go into um, being able to differentiate differentiate your business from those bad actors that is going to make you fall into the same category as everybody else and also make you come off as, you know, one of those businesses that are making people like the government step in and create these policies to try to cut out all the spam, cut out all the noise because the users are not enjoying their experience. Um, I, I usually am the one who talks about where you can go to demo the features that have been discussed, but Vic, do you want to, uh, cause I'm usually saying to go to you anyway, do you want to take the reins on how, how do people see these features that you're discussing about video messaging and automated phone calls and AI? Like, where are you going to actually find that? You, you know, that uh, I, I wanted to go and, and challenge anybody who's watching this and say, look, why don't you go and message, like put my number 
right? Put my information. You can reach me at vic at channelautomation.com. Um, you can also message me directly or you can, you can go and subscribe me to your flow, right? And my cell phone is 626-695-8105. That's my personal number. You know, I subscribe myself to like <laughs> countless uh, telemarketing messages and stuff like that because I do want to experience all of those. It's just kind of the thing that I like doing. Subscribe me there. And then once you have my number, let's go and challenge the status quo, right? I'll sh like, you want me to, to go and talk to you about it? Well, show me what you have and I'll show you what, what we can, what we can do to improve it. I think that's a better way than me trying to just like, show me what you have and I'll show you what we have, right? Let's show each other what that is and, 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 and look at those particular possibilities. Um, and I think that's the one way we could, um, we could help you know, each other, or at least, you know, for us, our mission is to create zero marketing messages that are wasteful. And we, we really want the very best, you know, experience for messaging um, and being able to provide that messaging to people at its most effective level. And that is when they when they want it. And it's delivered by the person or the persona it could be an AI as being calibrated of who they find salient. And I think if the world had this particular stance, um, we wouldn't have spam, number one. We would have less regulation um, and, and people would be, you know, would be happy to go and receive messages um, without getting bombarded with all this particular noise. Um, will it ever happen? I don't know, but we certainly will try now, won't we? Absolutely. So that's going to be it for us today. Whether you love or hate what we talked about, we do want to hear from you. So go ahead and shoot us one of those comments on our YouTube. Give us a like. Even if you don't like what we had to say, we want to hear from you. You can always email us at hello at channelautomation.com. Or if you want to get any more information about our features, you can go to www.channelautomation.com and take a look around. And if you want to demo some of our features, you can always shoot us a form or, you know, Vic just straight up dropped his phone number and I can confirm that is indeed his phone number. Uh, you can just say, hey, that thing that you mentioned, I actually want to try that out and we'll send you a demo your way that you could experience in real time. So as always, follow us on social media, give us a, a shout and uh, keep that lead conversion high.